Today on the No Sitting on the Sideline Dad podcast, episode 21, my guest is Janine Linhan from SunkissFamily.com. We talk about them social emotional health for your children, what is a good chowder, and the different stages of children's life, what they go through. Next on the podcast, let's do this. Welcome to the No Sitting on the Sideline Dad podcast, a podcast about a journey of discovery and conversations about not sitting on the sideline of life. Let's get involved. Here's host Joe Foley. Welcome to the episode of No Sitting on the Sideline Dad podcast. Hey, my name is Joe Foley. I'm a dad, and I really want to say thank you for being here. I know as a dad and a parent and a crazy busy adult, we're busy and you choose to spend time listening. It means a lot. This is a podcast about having a conversation, what it means to be a dad and a parent and a crazy busy adult in this world. It we cover issues top related to being, you know, this is top related to being one of those people like crazy busy adult because we're busy, busy people. We're all going through the same issues. Maybe we're not exactly the same, but we're going through similar issues. So this, I love being a dad, and I love sharing stuff with you. This is a journey. I'm not an expert. I try to take one day at a time in this crazy world because that's all you really can do. On today's podcast, my guest is Janine Linehan from Sunkiss Family. We talk about development of children's social emotional health and the different stages they go through. It's funny you say that. My son is one of the stages. He's three. I think he's three going on 30. I'm not sure if that's a stage, but it's something we talk about today. Also, what's a good media diet? It was fun talking to Janine, and I learned a lot, and I know you will too. So let's jump right in. Today on the podcast, my guest, Janine Linehan, founder and principal of sunkissfamily.com. Janine, welcome to the podcast. Oh, hi, Joe. Glad to be here. Well, one thing I like, can since you're from Boston, I had to ask this question because, you know, local area. Oh, no, yes. Where is the best place to find some chowder? Because I'm even saying it like a Boston chowder. The chowder. <laughs> uh, well, um, I, I, as a as a young college girl, I worked at Durgan Park, so they would be upset if I didn't say that theirs was very good. But um, but you know, there's um, it depends. Are you, are you a thick broth? Do you like the broth thinner? Right. Everybody has a, a has a preference. So. Yeah, so I would I would have to go with my my mainstay Durgan. They had a thicker broth, um, but my husband prefers thinner, so he would say probably Kelly's. Kelly's Kelly's roast beef, yes, they do they definitely have a, a great chowder. I usually eat there at lunch. My my work in that area, so I sometimes I head down there for lunch. Yes. Um, well, I guess I would like start off. What what is Sun Family uh, SunKissFamily dot com? What is that all about? Yes. So. Um, the impetus behind it was, um, I went back to school as an adult learner and, um, had a wonderful mentor over at Tufts University, uh, Julie Dobrow, and I was in the child development program. And I think as an adult, you can explore all these different options, right? Because you, you can, you can try to navigate and say, you know, where do I really want to be? As opposed to sometimes when you're much younger, you know, you just, you go with impulse. And when you're a little bit older, you go, you, you're driven by experience. And so um, I chose the child development field because it encompassed so many things like psychology and sociology. And um, while I was there, um, I had this great mentor, like I said, Julie Dobrow. And, and when I graduated, I was sitting with this insane amount of information in my lap. Um, and um, I was trying to decide, you know, what do I do with all of this information? Um, do I start something independently? Do I go into the public sector? Do I go into the private sector? Um, and I think um, I decided what I would try to do with this information is gather some of these wonderful minds that I had met while I was at the university. Just, um, uh, just they had just so many fruitful ideas and uh, were interested in sharing them. And they were all going off to terrific 
positions, be it Stanford or Yale New Haven Hospital or all kinds of places. So um, I had reached out to them and said, look, you know, I think you're brilliant. Um, would you be interested in working with me on accumulating content for a site based on the social and emotional health of children, which was my subfield? And when you're looking at your master's and your PhD programs, um, it's, it's no more sort of like a, 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 there's like no prerequisites or those types of things. And you're not just sort of testing these muddy waters, trying to figure out, you know, where do I belong? You're really hyper-focused on your areas. So, um, some people in child development are focused on policy and, um, others are focused on social work and, um, mine really looked at the social and emotional health of children. And so, I was also interested in trying to look at, um, you know, how can we work and support children with a wide range of developmental and intellectual abilities, right? Mm -hmm. And how do we take their abilities and help them to master these social and emotional stages? And you need the support, of course, of parents and so Sunkissed Families was born. I had a bunch of people that said, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. And I said, great, let's do it. Well, interesting, different stages of um, ch um, childhood life. Um, my son, I loved, because uh, when he was born, you know, it was like, oh, it's like a big ball of clay. Next thing you know, he's <laughs> talking. Next thing you know, he wants to be independent and he has his own will. Now, he's, the three going to be on four. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, it's fun and exciting to watch different stages of development. It's, can you, you don't know if you want to talk a little more about that, because... I'm very fascinated with that, actually. Yeah, well, it is, right? Because so often, you know, when we, are, when we, consider, um, when we consider, like, development, you know, we are, we are looking sometimes at um, physical development, right? Or, or do they, um, are they rolling over from their tummy to their side? Are they lifting their head right in their early stages? You know, are, are they able, when they get a little bit older, can they walk up and down a set of stairs? And one of the things I think that, um, that we may not be paying enough attention to early on is those stages within a child's social and emotional health, right? So if, if I, you've seen the site, right, so now you know. But if you haven't seen the site and I said to you, well, so Joe, you know, what do you, there are five stages of social and emotional development that we are focused on, um, you know, if I was going to ask you, what do you think those five stages are and when do they happen? You know, I've, we did a survey of um, a few hundred people and um, less than 1% could get past the first stage. Most people automatically knew um, that it was the nurturing stage, right? So you're in the, the early years between one and zero, you're fostering this you know, um, trust factor, which you know, will instill in your child a healthy sense of hope for them to move forward and explore, right? So that takes them to their next stage. And because there are a series of stages, right, we're looking at children at what, what are they able to accept at that period, right? Mm -hmm. both, both physically um, and intellectually, and we know that in the very early stages, the best thing you can do for your child is to coddle them, to go to their side when they're needed, because they don't have the reasoning skills to say, oh, yeah, she's busy, she's washing the dishes, or he's busy, he's switching the laundry over, or they're at work, right? They want to be tended to. And so if you did nothing else, no, the, no child cares what they're wearing between one and zero when they walk out the door, right? Yeah. They just want to be held. And um, once you've promoted hope within that child, they're feeling so much better. They're feeling good about the world they're in, right? They're about one. They're starting to feel, they're getting their feelers. You know, some are beginning to walk. Some are starting to, some are already walking, um, so they're exploring, right? So they're, uh, they're exploring and their autonomous side comes out, right? Mm -hmm. Is my parents, you know, hovering over me all the time? Well, you don't need to. Between one and three, you know, as long as your environment is safe, 
Um, and you know, you, you've covered up all your outlets and you don't have any sharp corners. It's a wonderful time to let your child explore, let them go through your pots and pans and take out those wooden spoons, those types of things, let them explore their safe surroundings. So we look at stages in that way. Well, as I know that uh, my son right now, he's been three going on four. He sees me doing podcasting. He's like, Daddy, let me come over there. Let me let me see the keyboard. I want to podcast with you. I'm like, he's starting to, he's starting to see, interest to see what I do. And then he hears yeah. me once in a while through the podcast. And yes. it's fun sharing with him because it's it's a great learning experience for both of us. Yes. Well, and he can he can express himself. So that's a wonderful thing. You know, you could even set up sort of like, you know, a mini little station for him. <laughs> You know, so that he can, you know, kind of fiddle um, with his own keys and things, you know. So I think that's fabulous. And there's one thing um, me and my wife also nurtured him, when he, especially when he was younger. We talked to him more as a regular person than doing the goo goo gaga. Here you <laughs> just talk to him. I, I think, I don't know how it's going to work, but I guess it, I think it helps with his vocabulary by just talking to him normal. Yes. Well, I think children, I think children have the ability, right, to be able to accept the language you're delivering as long as it's developmentally appropriate. Yeah. You know, there, there isn't, there isn't really a need to skew the words to make them sound like baby talk. If your child is ready to speak, then they can say the word. You know, I know that my husband held on quite for a long time with our first and didn't want my daughter to change the way she said apple, which was happy or things like that. It's, you know, that was more disappointing for the parent than it was for the child. <laughs> I know. I, I can see that. Next thing, one thing, one day I haven't seen him and next thing I go, what, what, what? You just, you, you grew like three inches. What's going on? <laughs> that's right. That's right. So when you, we're talking um, when we're, we're, we're talking in, you know, these different, um, tones, it's really, and we're trying to foster, you know, kind of hold back the language. It's really more parent centered than it is child centered. So when is a good stage, since we're on the topic about stages, I guess, when is a good stage to introduce somebody, um, a child with chores, give them, start giving the kid chores. Oh, oh goodness. Um, around three years old. Three years old. Simple, yeah, simple. Could you give me simple. an example? Like maybe you maybe an example of that? Sure. For people that have, um, you know, a small animal, um, you know, whether it's a, a cat or, a, you know, or even even if you have a large dog, if you, if you set up an area for your child to be uh, to feed or um, wipe the bowl clean, right? You can have. Um, clean wipes set up and they can wipe the bowl and they can put it in the trash and then they can, you know, put uh, the, the dry food into the bowl. Um, they're not ready to handle a can opener or other types of things, but if you have dry foods, things like that, they can certainly handle it. Um, children are great at puzzles, so they're probably really good at matching other things. And <laughs> so, you know, I, it could be as simple as, you know, if you've got a large family, there's a lot of socks around and everybody can have fun matching those socks. And like I used to say, gosh, my kids are so great at puzzles, so we can put together these socks. It'll take five minutes and you don't have to make it. It's, it's really you know, sometimes I think chore, the word chore gets a bad rap and it's, um, it's really an opportunity to, to build up all of your skills, right? So you're holding those socks, turning them over, you're using your small motor skills, you're thinking critically when you have to wipe out your dog's bowl or your cat's bowl and make sure that it's clean and putting food in. Um, you could have plastic plates set up instead of your heavy plates. Um, my son used to um, set dinner for us. In the, at, uh, remember, he was probably about four, um, but he used to set the table for dinner. But we had, you know, um, just simple utensils, um, nothing sharp, um, but we had plastic plates and napkins, and he would set up. And um, our thing was whoever cleaned has to clean. Whoever cooked has to clean. I, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> whoever, yes, our rule was whoever cooked didn't have to clean. So uh, consequently, the, you know, my husband and the kids, because I enjoyed cooking. So he, um, so he cleaned a lot, I guess. 
they both cleaned. They all cleaned a lot until they really learned how to, to love cooking themselves. And then I was doing a lot of the cleaning. So it's just, it's the idea is to be, to spend as much time together as you can. You know, you don't send a child off saying, you've been bad, go match the socks. You know, it's it's a puzzle. It's a game. You know, you have to make it interesting. Life is interesting, but you need, uh, you need to put together those small things before you get to the larger ones. You know, it's a bit building blocks. The, the next step, I guess, was um, on the uh, the whole child's life stage is to get three to six and having a purpose. My son's going to be four, but we just talked about that. He definitely has a purpose and a will. <laughs> Three and a half going on 30. Six to 12 is competence. Um, what does that mean? I was just curious what that meant, competence. Well, sure, sure. So we know that um, we know that when um, between these ages, you know, your, your child is probably been in school and is recognizing peer relationships Um, so, um, whether it's, um, you know, your um, child is in kindergarten or up through fifth or sixth grade, um, those peer relationships are becoming a little more important and they're recognizing what their peers can do and they look at what they can do and they're saying to themselves, do I have those skills? Do I have those abilities? Am I competent? And the best thing that you can do is take a look at those things that interest your child and not necessarily what you think might, you know, it, um, it interests you, but try to have them test the waters, navigate the waters on you know, different activities and figure out, you know, what they enjoy and uh, what the things they want to explore. If they're interested, they will build a level of competency within that. Well, I guess my son, <laughs> my, my, his Pepe, his grandfather, they take him in to the, the um, workshop and he gives him screwdrivers. He has his own tool belt and he knows how to, I mean, I got to <laughs> screw everything in the house. But uh, Daddy, he goes, Daddy, Pepe said you're not, qual- you're not certified in that screwdriver. You can't use it. <laughs> yeah, you need your certification to use. Yeah, so his and he's smart. Your, your dad is very smart. Well, he, you know, he didn't make it intimidating. He didn't, you know, he let him know. and But he said it in such a nice way. I need my certification to use a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about the Sunkiss family. How did... Oh, I'm sure we talked about how it got started. What does a Sunkiss family have to offer their families? What kind of things do you have on the website? Yeah, so we have a few. We have a few different categories, and they're of course they're all based in the social and emotional health realm. So one of the things, and um, we're hoping to grow, but right now we're looking at ways you can foster social and emotional health in the home, um, and. Uh, if your child um, is um, uh, is in the hospital, um, we're looking at um, sh- uh, short or long term illnesses. You know what types of what types of things um, or nurturing you can provide your child um, when because it's a very scary experience, right? So when um, when your child is admitted, and we talk parents through the process um, and try to give them tips so that they can become for, for themselves and for their child. Uh, we also have, um, we've, uh, uh, have some wonderful pieces on what we call the child-centered classroom. Um, and that just means when we're looking um, at um, a, child, a child-centered classroom, we are, what we are trying to do um, is promote their initiative um, and purpose and look at building their skills and abilities. It's not necessarily hovering over the child or catering, 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 but it's letting them be. And uh, so those types of things. We, um, we, uh, I did my research over at the Center on Media and Child Health over at Boston Children's Hospital and so, and uh, worked under my advisor um, at Tufts, Julie Dobrow. And so we look at media and child health and, you know, um, what, um, what is healthy for a child's media diet. 
Well, it's funny you say that. I mean, we my um, my son just kind of turned four, and we watch um, Daniel Tiger, which is pretty amazing mm-hmm. moment of, and, and he'll sing the songs. He, that's, and we learned some of his his um, emotional skills. I think emotional skills come from Daniel Tiger. But you turn on a different show, like he all of a sudden likes Transformers. And we limit it to like one episode. But you can see the, uh, from watching Daniel, his car, I'm watching um, Transformers. He's a little bit more aggressive. I'm, I don't know if that's nice. interesting. I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, well, when you're looking at um, stations like PBS, which I think you and you and I are both uh, Fred Rogers fans, um, but um, um, you know we're talking about a uh, a station that's driven by community, mm-hmm. right? And um, and when you're looking at uh, some of these um, other stations, um, while they provide um, entertainment. Um, many of them are driven by profit, they're, they're profit driven. Um, and, uh, you know, they're really trying, they're, uh, uh, they're attention driven, profit driven, they can be louder. Um, and it doesn't mean that there's not a place for this type of entertainment. And it doesn't mean that their skills can't be learned from it, but there are as, as much, and as much as I, um, love and support PBS and love and, you know, support some of these other wonderful types of entertainment. Um, I still believe that nothing can replace um, being with family and friends and uh, your uh, teachers, mentors, and being outside. Um, you can explore what you learned, um, maybe on a television show, climbing, you know, hiking, um, doing different types of um, art that maybe you watching on TV. Ex- you can explore it right at your own kitchen table. It's like Play-Doh, which <laughs> Play-Doh is always fun. We're playing with Play-Doh, crayons, and, and paint. And even just um, we the other day, we I had an old piece of cardboard, and I got some tape from Walmart that had uh, um, roads. It was basically roads, like tape, and we made a whole city with it. And oh. it, was, it was fun exploring like that. We made like he grew, he put it, because he likes his TV show, The Headquarters for His Fire Truck, and The House, and <laughs> Nana and Papa's, and it was, it was fun using his imagination like that. Well, you just built your own pop-up playground, which has become very popular, right? So they have these pop-up playgrounds that we just did an article on, and people get together, and they, you know, fill, uh, um, you know, a, a vehicle with cardboard boxes, and tape, and all kinds, and chalk, and they bring it out to a playground and they just put it there and they watch children come and they explore, right? So, um, and we, um, so I think that those types of um, uh, experiences are, are so important. I also want to say, too, that we want to make remember that media isn't limited to, to television. You know, ex- um, being able to um, listen um, to music and experiment with music um, is also very important. Um, and so as you listen, you become may become more interested and then they can begin experimenting with it and seeing what instruments they enjoy. Um, I did an, uh, an interview a few years ago uh, with a gentleman named Billy Childs and he, wonderful guy, won two Grammy Awards um, uh, for his um, musical abilities with the piano. And um, one of the things that he spoke about was um, how his mom nurtured um, uh, an interest that he had in music, but it wasn't until he went to go visit his friend at his house one day and he was leaning up against the door waiting for his friend to come downstairs and he saw... Uh, his friend's older brother just sort of banging the keys on the piano. <laughs> and he said um, to Billy, why don't you come over? Do you want to wanna play? You know, want to hit the keys or play the keys with me? He said, I don't know the piano that well. But he'd had some experience with other instruments, so he seemed to pick it up pretty quickly. But it was a friendship between the two of them that has lasted their lifetime. Wow. So... It's, it's, so there was music filled in his home as a young child um, that led, you know, to his interest. And, of course, his mom trying to foster that, which led to 
his uh, friendship uh, with his friend's older brother. So, um, and it, it means a lot to a 10 year old, even when a 13 year old says, Hey, you know, you want to do this with me. It could be anything. It could be, um, you know, experimenting or playing music um, or throwing a basketball. doesn't matter. Another thing I like to ask is, how does uh, somebody get Sunkissed Family approved? I saw some of the people on the list, like the Autism Society Organization, Center for School and Emotional Health, and my favorite, Fred Rogers Center. Aww, we got to love Fred. Um, yes, so um, well, some of those we have an intimate relationship with, right? So I um, did my research over on um, the Center on Media and Child Health. Um, which is um, at Children's Hospital, which is a Harvard teaching school. Um, so I, 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 um, I know them personally. I've done research with them. Um, and we have other people that we know over at these other places, um, like the Center on the Developing Child. Um, many of them um, are doing research um, and, uh, and sharing it um, publicly uh, once that research becomes available um they work with community and uh philanthropic you know, they have um uh their, in, their intentions are to provide um the best information through research and development um to hospitals and um other professionals in the community um but we also have other things on there that um uh, like a little yoga site, which I found um, to be very helpful, which is free. You can log on to, and um, and there are little areas on there that will teach yoga to children, and um, there are site places there for adults because we believe you will be in moving your body um, is just as healthy as, you know, um, sitting um, still. Well, it's one of the, some of the other programs, too, that I found interesting was the, the cooking. There's a cooking, the run the cooking and nutrition, and the yoga. And that, that's, that, um, that seems like another form of exercise I haven't tried yet, but I'd like to try it someday. But yoga and the mindfulness, and, and, and it was interesting. You often, I saw that also on the website. I didn't know if you want to talk a little bit about that because I thought it was interesting. Yeah, so, um, so Tufts has a, um, a magazine uh, that they put out, and it's chock full of wonderful information about nutrition um, that, um, that's good for both parents and children, and, and it offers you a ton of insight. You know, I think, um, take a look at those links. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, um, uh, in that there isn't room for other types of sunkiss to prove, but at this point, I think we feel very good about the um, uh, the links that we are currently providing. So we know that if you are navigating away from our website, um, that we feel that these are um, wonderful places that you can explore. Well, I guess um, wrapping up, I guess any final thoughts for families? Anything you'd like to? Yes, uh, there is probably nothing better that you can do for your child than to spend time with them, talk to them. And when you, the, probably the most important thing that I have learned um, is just to use the words, I understand. So when your child comes to you and they are having an issue or they're excited about something, really just stop and listen. Try to digest what they're saying and consider it from their perspective, not from yours. Oftentimes, we are more frightened about what we think is going to happen than is what is actually happening. So if they have a concern, if they're having trouble with a peer, just stop and listen and you know, recognize their concerns and using those words, I understand how you must feel. Well, is, well, I'm sorry. No, it's as simple as that. Um, where else, where they can find you and if they want to get in touch and maybe any more questions? Sure. We can be reached at um, info at sunkissfamilies.com. I can also be reached at, um, you can uh, put up my name, it's Janine, J E A N N. I-N-E dot L-E-N-E-H-A-N at gmail.com. 
All the, all the links and all the um, links for the website and Janine's email will be in the show notes. Well, Janine, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. I really do appreciate it. It was fun. And it was fun meeting you. So much fun. And it was a great time. Thank you. Have a great day. Oh, you too. That's all for this episode. I want to say thank you for joining me on the No Sitting on the Sideline Dad podcast. And I want to say thanks to Janine Linham for being a guest on the podcast today. You can find more about Gene over at nosittingonthesideline.com slash 21. All the links, emails will be in the show notes. You can find the show notes over at nosittingonthesideline.com. And please comment on the podcast. All comments help improve the show. If you want to reach out and say hello to social media or my email, you can find all my contact information at nosittingonthesideline.com slash contact. All over there, Twitter, Facebook, email, or whatever you think of social media be there. Also, when you're over there, I have a great idea. Can you please sign up for the newsletter so we can keep in touch and you can update on anything happening in the podcast, future guests, links. If I come across something really interesting might be helpful, it would be in the newsletter. Well, thank you for your time. Until next time, have fun. Get involved with your children. Hug them. Spend time with them. You know, how much you love them because time's short and time goes by fast until next time take care god bless see ya thank you for listening to the podcast please subscribe to the newsletter to receive updates of the show and helpful and useful tips this has been a production of foley 42 media